I was right. I love being right. I was right in 2006 when I told my mom to buy Google. She didn't, by the way. I was right when I told my wife that you can put the t-shirts in the dishwasher and it does the exact same thing. You don't need a clothes washer. And I was right about kernel mode anti-cheat. Microsoft paves the way for Linux gaming success with a plan that would kill kernel level anti-cheat. And if you didn't already guess it, it has to do with the CrowdStrike incident. Now we're gonna kind of talk about what's going on here and what this means for the future of gaming on Windows and gaming on Linux and the nature of the kernel level anti-cheat ecosystem. Now it all starts here in July. Back in July, after the massive CrowdStrike outage that ended up grounding flights and bringing businesses around the world to their knees. And for those of you that were like, oh, I wasn't affected. Well, okay, check out literally all the airports in the world circa July of this past year. Not a great place to be if you, you know, exist. So what happened was this company called CrowdStrike they have a product called Falcon. Falcon is a uh, security as a service product. They put a, a, basically a monitor in your computer that looks for malware and they ship updates to this piece of software that adds to things that it's looking for, right? They're called channel files. Now, when they shipped channel file 291, I won't go into super detail of what happened, but basically they didn't check their code properly before they shipped it. And as a result, it brought the entire world down. One company pushed a bad update and turned off the economy for roughly eight hours, right? Not a, not a great place to be. So as a result, Microsoft's talking about locking down the Windows kernel in order to prevent similar issues from arising in the future. According to a Microsoft blog post about the recent Windows Endpoint Security Ecosystem Summit, the company is committing to providing more security capabilities to solution providers outside of kernel mode. Now, you're probably wondering, you're talking a lot about CrowdStrike here. What does this have to do with gaming? Well, there's kind of a big debate going on in the gaming industry right now, and it all has to do with how we look for cheaters, right? There are two solutions that are thought of, and a lot of companies are leaning towards one. You kind of have two options. You have server-side anti-cheat and client-side anti-cheat. Server-side anti-cheat, as the name implies, is literally look for telemetry coming from a player in terms of actions per minute, making decisions that they couldn't feasibly have made without knowing additional data, or you know, all the processing is done on the server side. There's no code that runs on the client side to do this. And then obviously the opposite of that is client-side anti-cheat. The issue that a lot of client-side anti-cheat solutions have been having recently, and where a lot of the, the hubbub has come from, is that in order for client-side anti-cheat to work, it has to have privileged access to your computer to look not only into the memory of the process that is running, but the memory of other processes that are running, and also all of the input peripherals that you have, like your keyboard and your mouse, to make sure that you don't have some kind of either code that is injecting code into the game or you know a, a fancy peripheral device that clicks the mouse a thousand times a second, right? There has to be privileged ways of running uh, to give you that level of access. And so as a result, there's been a huge trend towards kernel mode anti-cheat. And kernel mode anti-cheat has been a topic of very controversial discussion. Basically, every major game manufacturer to include Valve, EA, Riot, games and epic games all have their own version of kernel mode anti-cheat now if you're new to this channel or don't know what a kernel is basically your computer has two modes of operation you have user mode which is what you're looking at right now your browser is a program on your computer and the kernel is the privileged code that turns on your computer runs your computer and does all the super important stuff if a hacker were to get access to your kernel they'd be able to do a lot more stuff than a normal virus would do and as a result is a huge attack surface for the layman that doesn't really pay attention to the security of their code and like we saw in CrowdStrike, an issue in the kernel could have huge effects on the world. Either take down the world's economy by blowing up the computers everywhere, or if they got kernel mode access, they'd have privileged access to all the computers if a vulnerability was found. And so as a result, people are kind of pissed about just the nature of game development because there's so much kernel mode anti-cheat. This one guy here on, on Reddit says, the insanity of EA's anti-cheat system by a kernel dev. I've worked on multiple kernels for over a decade, some proprietary, some open source. My work has ranged from fixing security vulnerabilities to making new features of various subsystems, writing and fixing many drivers for all sorts of device classes. I do this for money and as a passion project in my spare time. So this guy has a wide breadth of knowledge. You know, we'll probably should take his opinion seriously. And he goes on to the history of computing. There was a time when kernels did not exist and programs had complete access to the hardware and any bug or nefarious bit of code would compromise or crash an entire system. So there is an entire world of OSs before Linux, before Windows, 
Windows that, you know, there wasn't an OS. When you wrote code, you wrote it on the bare metal and a bug in that code would compromise the entire system. Now, the whole idea of a kernel was they were invented to isolate user space processes, share resources amongst programs. So you have process A and process B and they want to talk that happens through the kernel and to provide an abstraction layer through which various system services can be required can be requested via a finite number of kernel functions. Now, code running in the kernel has none of this isolation. It is essentially free to do anything it wants with your system, down to controlling all of your hardware. Now, that is a little bit of a reach. Kernel mode code in Intel runs in ring zero. There is code that runs ring negative one and negative two, so not completely true. Uh, but for the most case, if you have kernel mode access to a computer, you can do basically whatever you want to it. The kernel runs in a super privileged mode that allows calling any instruction your CPU can execute. This code also has free access to the internal data structures of the kernel, which are normally hidden from user processes. Now he kind of wraps this up here. Know that these kernel level systems are extremely dangerous. No game is worth the level of control you give to a developer when they request kernel level access by installing kernel modules or patches. Drivers, patches, and modules should always be installed but only when they are absolutely necessary and correspond to a hardware device that the kernel does not natively support. And this is a flack that I get from a lot of people when I talk about kernel mode anti-cheat. They're like, oh, Microsoft already has all the drivers in the world. Or like, how do you think your mouse works? And it's like, dude, I fucking get it. Like, I know that my mouse, I can't pick it up, my keyboard or, you know, whatever, has to have a driver to work. But I don't think I should have to install a kernel mode driver for my game to work. I think that's a fucking ridiculous request that no one should, should be beholden to. So anyway, back to this article here. According to the blog post, Microsoft and many of its security partners and vendors have discussed several aspects of the future of security in Windows, but moving security features out of the kernel has some serious implications for the future of gaming on Linux. Removing kernel level security software would mean that anti-cheat software would often be implemented with user access, making it much less intrusive and far easier to emulate with translation layers like Wine or Valve's Proton. Wine being Wine is not an emulator, it's a Windows API stub for Linux that you can run Windows games on Linux. Now in the Windows blog post at this uh, ecosystem security summit, all the vendors that came to hang out with Microsoft and talk about how to make Windows a better platform for security talked about the following things. And again, the whole idea is to get code out of kernel mode as much as we possibly can because of the security implications we saw, not only with CrowdStrike, but just by the design of kernel mode code, right? So they talked about a few things, uh, performance needs and challenges outside of kernel modes. So obviously when you're running a process, the process only gets as much time on the CPU as the operating system will allow. If you have code in the kernel, it is naturally more performant because you get to control how long the kernel mode runs for. Now, obviously you can't just have a thread run forever in kernel mode because that will also throw an exception, but generally kernel mode code is a little more performant than user mode code. A big one here is security sensor requirements. So instead of having a piece of code that is custom to every vendor for anti-cheat, what I think Microsoft is trending towards is having there be particular either uh, security sensors or code that already exists that is written by Microsoft in the Windows kernel where a game can hit the sensor and say, hey, is the computer in a trusted boot state, right? Is there code that is introspecting into game code? Is there potentially devices on this computer that that shouldn't be, maybe you can give the game a score of how much it trusts the platform, and then from there, use that to determine if it'll accept a connection to the server or not, right? Instead of giving the vendor the arbitrary ability to write their own security, security detection system, maybe Microsoft should just have their own that acts as an API you can call out to from user mode, effectively leaving the kernel mode code only up to be maintained by one person. This is part of the issue that I have with kernel mode anti-cheat is the trend right now is every game company that wants to use kernel mode anti-cheat either has to adhere to one that is already in the wild that already exists or they make their own and companies tend to get code wrong and a lot of these are closed source so the more kernel mode code that exists the more bugs there inevitably will be and we saw this with genshin impact by the way there is literally an, inc an incident where a ransomware author wrote ransomware code that used a bug in Genshin Impact's kernel mode anti-cheat to bypass antivirus protection. So like literally there was a function in the anti-cheat that had a bug, the ransomware author knew that and they used the anti-cheat to make it so that you didn't, you weren't able to tell that the ransomware was actually malware. So this, this is not the first time we're having this conversation, right? Basically the less code that we have that exists in the kernel that is written by somebody else and the more we can standardize what a security sensor for gaming looks like is going to make our lives a lot easier. And obviously you have the traditional boilerplate like development and collaboration principles and secure by design for the future platform. Now, how does this apply to gaming, right? How does this apply to, to Linux gaming? Well, the idea here is a lot of 
game developers are nervous about making code, making games for Linux, I think for two reasons. One, potential performance issues, which is going away as you know modern platforms like Ubuntu, for example, are getting better with how they handle long-term performance of a system. Uh, but also too, I think Linux is thought of generally as the more modifiable system, the system that hackers use. And as a result, I think game manufacturers that are trying to get into the anti-cheat realm where they want to make sure that they have a trusted execution uh, are less likely to write code for Linux. Now, if we're getting to a place where Microsoft is removing the ability for games to depend on the kernel API because they're not allowing you to ship kernel mode code anymore, I think this makes a really good case for Linux gaming because there's going to be almost no excuse to not send your game to Linux. That being said, if Microsoft is going to replace the convention now with a security sensor, it'll likely be that the Linux uh, the Linux kernel will have to come with a security sensor too. So I don't know. Now, given this focus on tamper-proofing, there may be other ways for anti-cheat vendors to keep Linux gamers out of their games, if they so please, but we'll have to wait and see. So exciting times. I think we are trending towards getting, uh, you know, kernel mode code out of our ga out of our games, getting kernel mode anti-cheat to go away, and it just makes me really, really excited. So anyway, if you learned something, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit subscribe. I'm trying to get a million by the end of the year, and uh, we'll see you in this video where I kind of ranted about how I think CrowdStrike and kernel mode anti-cheat are the same problem. Goodbye.